What's up guys? Uh, this is Tech Masters. Welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be going over how you can cherry pick rare error coins or die varieties when you don't have a local coin store. Now there's a couple of things you can do. First off, if you have shows um, in your area, uh, convention centers oftentimes will hold, if you're in a major city or near a major city, will hold coin shows a couple times a year. Um, you can go to those, and a lot of times, you know, you're going to think these are dealers, they know what they're doing, and they do and they don't. Um, there are a lot of errors that they may not be aware of that they're selling off in their product. They don't even know they have, because not everyone can know every error. And the first uh, rule of thumb that I'm going to give you is, if you can, try and specialize in one type of coin. Specialize in Washington Quarter, specialize in, you know, Jefferson Nichols, specialize in whatever you have an interest in or you think you can find, you know, when you're out and about hunting fairly easily. Second thing, buy a loop. Uh, a loop is a handheld magnifier that jewelers use for detail work. If you're out at a coin show, you can spot coins uh, with high magnification of a loop. By the naked eye, a lot of these errors you will not see. And then the third way, and the one I'm going to go over today, is believe it or not, if you have no major city near you and you think, okay, I've got problems, I can't cherry pick, why would I bother? You can still cherry pick error coins off of eBay. And I'm going to show you one here. This is the Cherry Picker's Guide uh, to Rare Die Varieties. You can buy the Kindle version, which is the 5th edition, I believe, or the 4th edition, I don't remember. Um, but you can get it, and it is relatively cheap on the Kindle version. You can carry it with you on your phone, so it'll help you uh, when you're searching for errors. It'll let you, you know, if you think, hey, I might have found something, you can look at the pickup points on your phone. But the other thing it will do is it'll let you go through it. And we're going to today do a 1936 double die for a Washington quarter. Now, why did I pick this one? This is one that you can pick up with the naked eye in a photo. And not a lot of people who aren't error collectors know. These are the pictures right here where my mouse is, are examples of the pickup points. And if you look at the In God We Trust, the doubling is horribly strong. You can see this step right here at the bottom of the T, the bottom of the R. One of the easiest ways to pick this up, and you can find these in worn condition. They are easy to spot. Um, the step here at the bottom of the I, the step at the bottom of the T, and the thickness of that G and the O are great ways to spot that. Now, I know what you're thinking, though. You know, Tech Masters, it's easy for you to tell me and to show me pictures that, hey, you can find errors in eBay. But it's another thing to actually find the errors. Uh, that They don't know what they are, and they're not selling it as the error. And you're right. However, I just cherry-picked one off eBay just to prove an example. And I'm going to show it to you now. Now, the first thing I'm going to show you is not an error. It is a restored date buck, buffalo nickel. Okay. This is a 1914, as you can probably see down here. But you see this feather right here? That's what's called the third feather of a buffalo nickel. When you look at the nickel, you've got feather number one. Here, let me get something to point with. Here's a staple. You've got feather number one feather number two, and then down here is feather number three. That's what a buffalo nickel should have. What I found, and the date is barely readable on this, but there are extremely readable ones on there currently. Um, this is a 1918. Um, you can see the eight right here and the one. Now the one and the nine are pretty much completely wiped. Uh, the third, second one, I should say, is pretty close to completely wiped. But it's enough there that you can see that it is a 1, and you can definitely see the center of the 8 here and the bottom loop of the 8. So this is a 1918. And if you look up here, this is what's called a two-feather variety. You've got feather 1, feather 2. <laughs> look what's missing. No feather 3. And to top it off, this variety is the 1918s okay what makes that special is that is one of the lower mintage buffalo nickels 
Okay, so you have a low mint coin to start with. And then you have the error on top of that, which is even more scarce. This coin, even in this condition, is worth about $45. Now you're going to ask, what'd you pay for this? I bought it in a lot of three coins. It was 1918 PDNS set. And I paid the equivalent of about $2.25 a coin. So I just paid $2.25. I can get my money out of the other two. One has a completely clear date. The other one, you know, I can still sell for $0.50, cents, $0.60. Cents, doesn't matter. Um, the D is a weak date. It's even weaker than this one. But it is there. You can tell it was an 8. And you can tell there was the top of a 1. But anyway, this coin, for $2.25, in this condition, is worth about, you know, somewhere in the, in the range of $40, 40 to $50. I can sell this on eBay. And to prove my point, we're going to go on eBay. Okay. And we're just going to type in... 1918s2 feather. Okay, and then down here we'll go to completed items. I'm not going to sold items because that's a cheater method. But with a good solid date, this coin's worth 149.50. Um, this one is a weird listing. I looked it up. They sold it for 47.99. It says 1918s2 feather, but when you get down into the actual listing for the coin, is it going to let me in it? I'll see original listing. Okay. When you get down into the description of it, he had put 1931s buffalo nickel DDR001, um, and he put that into this description. So I don't think this got much bids, just due to the fact that uh, you weren't sure what you were getting. Um, I wouldn't have bid on that coin if if I wanted it. But then you go down here. Um, this one isn't even attested to being a two feather by NGC, and they sold it for $165. And if you look at the original listing, okay, you can see clearly it is a two feather variety, same as mine. Uh, one of the ways you can tell whether or not it's a two feather, um, legitimately, is the neck section here is a weak on the strike because what they did was they polished the die to get rid of this feather. And then the other thing is your F down below, uh, that is usually pressed into the metal, which even when the date goes away, a lot of times part of the F is still there. But your F is going to be very, very weak on the bottom of the coin, which as you can see here, it is. It's it's almost non-existent, um, and you can see that the neck there is is a weak strike. So this is a legitimate 1918s two feather variety that I cherry picked, and then I can hear the the, the next argument, guys. Okay, great. That's a 1918s, but it's a horrible condition. It's you know in error that most people would have looked for but not in this condition necessarily how are you going to sell that will it sell it may be a harder sell because of the date um, but let's play devil's advocate let's type in well hmm, we're gonna my watch list Okay, right here, 1925S Buffalo Nickel, 99 cents, right? Do you notice something missing on that coin? That date's very clear. Uh, it is nowhere near as rare as the 1918S, which is why I bought it. But the point is, you can pay 99 cents for this, 349 shipping. You got an error that you can sell for probably a good $20. Um, easily there. Um... Here's one, and I picked Buffalo Nickels because this is an error that uh, people can easily spot. Upper left, uh, come on, the upper left coin, do you notice a feather missing on that one? 
1919. Now, admittedly, that coin's not in the best of condition. There are ones on here, however, that are in good condition. I'm not uh, going to attract attention to them because, one, I may buy them. Um, but as you can see, you can find these errors quite easily all the time. Um, when you do, you can cash in on them. You'll get more out of it if you grade it. If you're going to grade an error like my uh, 1918S, grade it through ANAX um, because it's not worth the grading fees and the membership fees. Um, I have an automatic membership through NGC, but uh, I'm not sure that NGC actually recognizes the two feathers as a error variety. But as you could see when I was looking up the 1918S for sold coins on eBay, they definitely sell. That is an extremely popular variety that does sell. Um, so guys, you can cherry pick, even if you don't have a coin store. Get in the cherry picker's guide, pay the money, get the Kindle version. You don't have to get the print version because it's it can be horribly expensive depending on where you find it. They seem to be hard to find and fairly rare. Kindle version, pick it up, go through, find a couple errors that you know you'll be able to spot in photos easily on eBay, and start hunting. If you hunt long enough, I promise you, you will find errors, you will find varieties. And coin roll hunt. You can, you know, once you got the cherry picker's guide, there are a ton of modern coins that you can pick up that have errors that you can find in your change every day. I do it. I have done it. I've got errors that aren't even listed. I have cap die errors. Um, they don't tend to list those in cherry pickers because it, it's a fluke accident. Um, but I have them. I have die cracks. I, you will be amazed what you can find. If you pick up one of these digital USB microscopes like in my previous video, you can hunt details pretty easy on your computer. But uh, that's all guys. If you like this video, if you think it helped you, please give us a thumbs up. Put some comments down below. Tell me what you think. Tell me what errors you'd like to uh, search for. And uh, maybe, who knows, maybe we'll get a, a coin roll hunt going and see if we can find some modern errors um, if you have an interest in it. Let me know. Thanks guys. We're going to sign off. Bye.